Hey guys, my name is Gary. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Um, I've got about uh, eight and a half months of continuous sobriety, days and nights. Um, and I want to let you guys know, I, I just kind of want to run through the 12 steps and how they work in my life. And, and I remain sober. And all that 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 negative energy that pent up uh turmoil that that I could have uh when I quit drinking and using when I put the bottle down when I put the the baggie down when I put the pill bottle down uh you know once we remove the alcohol from the alcoholic you know uh, if you're alcoholic if you're anything like me you're going to you're, you're removing your coping mechanism. I mean, a alcohol and drugs was how I coped with day daily life, with uh, with chaos, with drama, with anything going on in my life. That's how I would cope with life. Uh, if you're alcoholic or you're a drug addict, drugs and alcohol are but a symptom. You know the 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 with the alcoholic. Um, our problem centers in our mind and we have a, a compulsion of the body we have that phenomenon of craving kicks in when we put in drugs or alcohol so in order to remain sober we have to arrest that yuckiness inside of us that that hamster wheel that's spinning the uh, the behaviors you know um, and the 12 steps do that for me okay uh, step one is uh, we were powerless over alcohol and our lives had become unmanageable that I knew that at a young age <clears throat> excuse me I knew at a young age I was uh, something was wrong I when I put I remember putting alcohol in my body for the first time and I was like, oh, man, this is great. This feels good. Why can't I always feel this way? And that was at a very young age. And the next time that happened, right, was when I did cocaine. And I remember doing my first line of coke going, oh, can't, you know, oh, my God, it feels so good. Why can't I always feel this way? So if a normal person's reaction to alcohol, you know, they might feel good or this was actually when i when i put this substances in my body this it was like wow this is awesome man oh I, I, why can't i always feel this way why didn't god make me feel this way all the time and i think a normal person doesn't think that way a normal person might catch a buzz and say oh yeah this is kind of cool i don't know how a normal person uh, feels on alcohol and drugs. I just know that how I feel. And when I, when I sit in meetings of AA meetings, I, I listen to other people and I go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly how I felt. Right. So if you, if you relate to this, you may be alcoholic, you may be a drug addict, and if you can't stop doing it once you start, um, you you may be also. So uh, once I put that stuff in, like I've been sober eight months now, eight and a half months. If I put, if I drink, I will get that instant, oh, you know. And then I I don't know. I might set off that phenomenon of craving. So. That's something I want to stay away from. If I do drugs, now drugs drugs work more powerful on me than alcohol. I know it's a crapshoot, you know, with the alcohol. If I if I have a drink, will I set off that phenomenon of craving? If I do a drug, a narcotic like uh, any any kind of amphetamine, cocaine, um, if I do Vicodin, I will instantly get that. Oh, that feels so good. And I will not be able to stop on my own power. 
I will need an act of God. And it took an act of God for me to stop. Uh, I was praying, you know, for many, many months. God, please make me willing to be sober again. Because I had uh, long-term sobriety. I had almost 10 years of sobriety. And uh, I couldn't stop on my own power. I would swear it off, and the next day I would be right back on it. I could never get more than, like, 24 or 48 hours of sobriety. And it was hell just to get to that point. And I would buckle because I, could, I couldn't stand the way I felt, and I needed more. I needed to put more in my body just to, just to get right. So step one, I was powerless over alcohol and drugs, and my life was unmanageable, you know. And um, step two, um, coming to believe that there's a power greater than myself that could restore me to sanity and remove this phenomenon of craving from my body and, and help me walk through life sober. Do I believe that there's a power greater than me that can do this? And, and I had to ask myself, I had to, I had to keep beating my head into the wall. And finally, uh, I tried every avenue on my own. And then it was like, I, I believed in there, there was some kind of God in life, in, in, in the world, you know, uh, but I, I didn't see how that could work in my life, you know, uh, so I came to believe in watching others and I found those other people in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. I watched people with 30 days of sobriety in, in meetings talk about the, the recovering. I, those are the ones that attracted me because I couldn't even grab fucking two or three days. But I listened to those guys and I, I listened to people with multiple years of sobriety and 30 years of sobriety and um, five years. And I watched them and I watched how they were laughing and they were happy and how they were talking about this power. Um, that they didn't, nobody really knew too much about. Uh, they they couldn't really tell you how it worked. They just said, you know, they, they could just tell you it was working. You know, if I do these things, if I work the steps, if I pray, if, if I help others, if I go to meetings, if I read this book, um, my life is now better. And... It's like the last thing you want to do is is uh, admit that, it, you know, surrender. I'm powerless over something. You know, I'm powerless over alcohol and drugs. I'm powerless. I can't stop doing that, you know. That's a fucking, you know, who wants to admit they're powerless? You know, we were, uh, you know, I was raised to, to, to be powerful, you know, not powerless, you know, to be strong, uh, to be able to handle situations, to be able to handle life, uh, to be tough, you know, don't quit, don't give up. So with that mentality, if you attack drug addiction and, and, uh, and alcoholism with that mentality, without bringing God into your life, good luck. I mean, those are the people really struggling and, and die that die from this disease you know that think i got this i'll do this i will conquer this man i tried i tried i'm 56 years old and i'm a guy who who's experienced multiple years of sobriety i believe i've got like 18 or 19 years of, of, of sobriety uh in my life and with and without program and then i've got years of being fucked up so it's a, uh, it's a disease. And if you're suffering from this disease, try this way of life, you know, try AA, NA, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous. If, uh, you know, if you're suffering from any addiction, this stuff works. So I've got a little bit of allergies going on today. Uh, I got my dog in the back here, I'm at Ladybird lake again and uh 
it's Monday morning, and it's going to be a good day today because uh, I know it's going to be a good day today. No matter what uh, the world throws at me, I've got God and the 12 steps in my life. I've got the, I'm surrounded by people in recovery and Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous that uh, are doing uh, the same thing that I'm doing, living <clears throat> their, their life through the 12 steps. And I've got a great support network. And I've got a great family. Um, so step one, you know, uh, admit, admitting we're powerless over alcohol and drugs and our life is unmanageable. Um, step two, coming to believe there's a power greater than myself that can restore me to sanity. So, you know, I saw these people doing it and so I started doing it and it started fucking working, right? It works. It's amazing. So you turn your will, so step three, turning my will in my life over to the care of God as I understand him. My my understanding of God is very limited, okay? It's just, it's very limited, okay? And you've got your understanding, I've got mine, right? Some people don't believe in God and they still go, they still can get there, okay? I happen to believe that there's a power greater than myself that can restore me to sanity. So what I do is I, I ask that power, God, please help make me sober. And I was asking that power for uh, over a year. Over a year. And one day I ended up with COVID. <laughs> I was driving from California to, to uh, or from, from Houston to California. I ended up in El Paso with COVID. And I was sick for five days. And I got up after five days and felt pretty good. And, and I, w I realized, oh my God, God just gave me what I thought was the worst thing that can happen to me, COVID, God just gave me five days of sobriety, something I couldn't uh, obtain on my own. So God did work in my life. I did get that miracle start that I needed. And I was smart enough and knew enough, I'm going to run with this shit. And I didn't feel great, but I felt good enough. I can do this. I can get through to this. Thank you, God. I gave the credit to God, and I do every day. Every day I remain sober. I don't say, I don't pat myself on the back and go, good job, Gary. I go, thank you, God. Thank you, God, and please give me another day tomorrow. And then when I get up in the morning, I don't always do this, but I, 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 am a, I give all the credit to God whenever I think about my sobriety, the gifts in my life. Uh, they're, they're all from God. So then I pray to that God in the third step prayer. My cre uh, <laughs> I always fuck this up. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou will. Relieve me of the bondage of self so that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties so that victory over them may bear witness to those that I would help with thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. And it doesn't say, that's just a suggested prayer. You know, you could go, God, you know, thank you. Thank you. Help make me a better man or woman today. Help me get through the day and be useful to others. Done. Doesn't have to be any exact words. It's your relationship with your God. Say it however you want. Now, step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Well, my moral inventory was, if, I, if you got resentments, write them down. Write all your resentments down. Find a sponsor. You find those people in meetings. Find a priest. Find a psychiatrist, psychologist. Somebody who understands what you're doing and knows something about the 12 steps. So you make a searching and fearless moral inventory. Mine started out with I'm resentful, I'm resentful, I'm resentful, I'm resentful, and then I hated myself for this, that, and yet, and the other for all this fucked up shit I did. And uh, and I and I read that list off, and and I was directed to okay, now uh, let's write about your fears. What are you afraid of? And, um, my fears, there was a million of them, 
you know? I was afraid I wasn't good enough. I was afraid I wasn't able to st I wasn't going to be sober. I, wa I was afraid uh, I wasn't going to make enough money to support my family. I was, you know, uh, uh, I was afraid. Um, God, you know, it's just, it's always, it, it's always, uh, in, I'm afraid I'm not going to get something that I want or I'm going to lose something that I have, that I love, that I, that I like, that I, I I'm going to lose that. Uh, I'm lose something that I have that I don't want to lose. So I'm afraid I'm not going to get something that I want. And then I obsess on those things because I'm self I'm so selfish and self-centered. So in, in, in doing that inventory, I looked, I got to take a look at, wow, you really do stay stuck on self when you're not going to get something that you want. You really fucking obsess over that. And when you're going to lose, you think you're going to lose something that you have. You really obsess on that. And look at the look at all the life that you miss when you're obsessing on one thing. You, I could be in a room full of people and I don't even realize they exist because I'm mentally I'm not there. I'm I'm focused on something else. And I got to look at that. Wow. And look how you live your life when you're afraid that you're not going to get those things or you're going to lose that stuff. Look at how you live your life. And in fear. Fucking aggressive. Uh, pushy, conniving, a lie, cheat, and steal. Wow, I don't want to live a life that way. But how do I conquer that fear? So I write all that stuff down on paper, right? And then I go to my my chosen person that I want to read this to. Mine happened to be my sponsor. <laughs> We're good friends today. And I got to read all that stuff to him. And that's humbling. You know, it's humbling to say, what, what, what was some of the stuff? You know, I'm jealous. I'm acting possessive and jealous over my relationship at the time I had back then. And, um, yeah, I'm jealous. I'm afraid she's going to fuck someone else. I'm afraid I'm going to lose her. You know, that was the bottom line. You know, I, I'm afraid I'm going to lose her. And I get to see my behavior. So when I'm afraid, I'm going to lose her. This is just one of my fears. When if I'm afraid, I'm going to lose her, right? Look at my behavior around that. Look what I do. So I, so I don't want to, you know, I act needy or I, I act uh, demanding or I, uh, I, you know, all this shit, all the, all different kinds of behavior around all that stuff. And, and I'm not living life to the fullest because I'm obsessing on a relationship. I'm going to lose this person. So I'm obsessing on keeping this person. And that's the person you're going to lose because you're fucking driving them nuts. So when you could realize that, oh my God, I'm, I'm just being jealous right now. That's silly, right? I'm not going to have a bunch of behavior around it. Maybe I'll talk to this person about it. Maybe I'll say, wow, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm jealous and I'm, I'm acting possessive and I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to do better. I'm aware of it now. And uh, I'm just afraid I'm going to lose you. And I'm, uh, That's it. I love you, you know. And, and instead of acting like a fucking whack job, the bottom line is I'm, I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to lose you because I love you. You know, those are those are real easy things to say once you realize why you're doing these things. And it makes sobriety more comfortable when you could see those things and say, wow, I love you because, uh, and I'm afraid I'm going to lose you. I could do the same thing with money, right? Uh, I think I'm going to lose a, a, a business deal or something like that. I'll act like a fucking maniac if I think I'm going to lose... Uh, you know, I was bidding big work at the time uh, when I got sober. I was, you know, if I thought I was going to lose a job, what, how, what can I do to fucking make this thing happen? And then I was a stepping outside of my, my, my morals or my, you know, what I thought was right and wrong. I would step outside of that if it would bring me something, uh, this job that I thought that I needed my company to have. And, um, 
that didn't feel good to me. It didn't feel good to, maybe I was lying, you know, or, or uh, somehow manipulating something or, you know, doing something against my values. Um, and, and I would, and I would do that stuff sober, but it didn't feel good when you're sober. See, when you're drinking, you can anesthetize yourself to like, ah, well, that's what everybody else does. Fuck it. Right. Well, no, I mean, uh, I, I, when you're sober, you, you, you feel those things like, man, I'm, maybe I'm cheating here or maybe I'm, I'm being dishonest and I don't like the way it feels. So let me, let me structure this deal and then let it go. You learn things like, well, if I don't get the deal, then it's not meant to happen. Here's my honest number. Here's what I think I can do it for. And, and let it go. And then move on to the next one. You know, I don't have to lie, cheat, and steal to get what I, what I want. So I learned all those things being sober. Um, <clears throat> other things with relationships, you know. You know, it's hard to tell the truth sometimes. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, in, 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 say a business, uh, relationship or something, you know, I could take, I'll take something very, you know, a client saying, Hey, is, you know, I need this job done. Did the material arrive at your office Have, at your shop yet? Um, and if I was busy and I, it didn't work with my schedule, I would tell them, no, no, the, the material hasn't arrived and I would lie. Instead of just saying the material is has arrived and we have we're putting it on the schedule to be done, I would just say yeah the material's not in yet, you know and 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 lie and that doesn't that's not the way I want to do my business. So today that's not how I do my business. I t I I tell the truth as much as I'm aware of, and sometimes I catch myself not telling the truth. And, and I try to figure out a way to tell the truth and get it done the right way instead of lying. I don't want to live my life behind a bunch of lies. I don't. It's not the way I want to live. So in the last eight months, especially in the last eight months, I, I, don't, I don't walk around lying to people. I'm not saying I haven't lied, but it's not the way I live my life. And when I do lie... Um, Sometimes I'm not even aware of it. Uh, and, and then sometimes I catch myself and go, yeah, that's not how you want to live your life. And I correct it. So all this stuff comes with sobriety. So that was discovered in writing that stuff down, starting with the, the resentment, getting to the fears and the selfishness, self-centeredness, looking at how I behave, and then reading that stuff to a sponsor is humbling, not humiliating, but humbling puts me in the right place and then he gets to share yeah that I, I behave the same way I do the same things and we we our natural reaction is to behave that way is to do those things but now that we're sober and we're, we're aware of these things now we start fixing our life and developing a better way of living so the other thing we do is uh so that was step four and five that okay five we uh so step four made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Uh, step five, we uh, admitted our faults to to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. The exact nature of our wrongs. Okay, so we write we write it down, and then we share about it to another with God, to ourselves, and to another human being. Then in step six, we ask ourselves. Okay, we get quiet. We sit at home. Am I willing to have God? This God that I don't know anything about, right? I just know he's fucking kept me sober for whatever that period of time from step one to step six, right? Some people it's six days. Some people it's six years. Some people it's six months. Okay, so this God that's kept me sober, am I willing to have this God remove all these defects of character that I just listed, this resentment, this fear, this, this selfishness, this self-centeredness? Am I willing to have him remove this stuff? And then the stuff you're willing to have removed. We go into the seventh step prayer. My creator, I'm now willing that you have all of me. The good and the bad. All this crap here on paper. Right? 
I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character that stands in the way of me being useful to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out and live my life. So now we've done a six and seven. We do eight. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. And I would say, you know, if you've got quite a list, like I had a financial, huge financial list. I've got one now too. and um, I'm willing to make those amends, but I can't make them if I don't have any money, right? So I'm, I make little ones, you know, and, and what I did, I made a list of all people I had harmed and I became willing to make amends to them all. And uh, I am willing. I'm willing to work out any situation where I've harmed somebody else. Absolutely. I'm willing to, I just made an amends the other night on Facebook with a, 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 a person from high school. I haven't spoke to this person since an incident in high school. And she got a hold of me on Facebook and said, hi, and I'm glad you're sober. I've been sober such, such and such amount of time. And I said, you know, I want to say if I've harmed, uh, you know, back in high school, I'm sorry uh, about an incident that happened. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry I harmed you. Is there anything I can do to make it better? Um, and this person said, no, I'm, that, that's in the past. And um, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. And uh, it, was, it was a great thing. So there's things I don't need. That wasn't even on my list, but I knew it came up. And I knew I owed an amends. And I, I did it. Uh, so just remain willing, right? So you're living in step eight. You know, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make, you know, to make amends. So remain willing and, and live in step eight. So you're working step eight. And and as you, you uh, approach these things in life, uh, some we have to go out and make amends, you know, to close relationships and things like that. And um, a, a lot of it is just staying sober, man. People that love you just want to see you stay sober. They want to know you're on the right path. And like my son who passed away, I owed him, him an amends to just stay sober, make people fentanyl aware. And because uh, I felt bad that I, I didn't give him the last 10 years of his life. Um, I wasn't sober, so I couldn't give him the guidance and direction and, and proper support that he needed as when I uh, as, as when I was, was when I was sober. Um, so, uh, and that one hurt, you know, that one really hurt. You know. Uh, so I have an amends to him. It's a, and it's a living amends and I've got living amends to my children right now, my ex-wife and, um, my parents and my brother and sister, and, um, all the people that, that are in my life that love me, uh, and to myself. The other thing, uh, the last three steps, okay, so that was step nine, uh, made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Um, you don't want to injure people with amends. You don't want to say, yeah, you know, if your wife doesn't know you're banging the secretary, you don't want to go, hey, honey, I'm banging the secretary. And um, you don't want to do that, man. You just want to stop your behavior and um, stop. The, the attention you're giving your secretary, start giving your wife, basically, and start loving uh, your wife, uh, doing better, and put get get rid of the secretary, okay? Uh, you know, however you work that out, man, with your psychologist, psychiatrist, don't 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 start running, don't start doing the steps on your own. You gotta have some guidance. People who've gone through this shit with us, or people who are therapists or stuff, or priests that know, you know, proper way to go through life and not create more wreckage um, and then step 10 11 and 12 those are our maintenance steps okay um, you know step 10 continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong promptly admit it that way we don't have a huge bucket of men's list every year so I do that I live like that uh, step 11 suggest uh, through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him.
praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So pray and meditate. And then step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to tra uh, other alcoholics and to practice these principles. Practice the 12 steps in all of our affairs. So go help someone else and practice these principles in your daily life. That's it. There's the program in 30 minutes. I just gave it to you. So you guys, it's working in my life. It's given me a new way of life and it's given me a new life. I'm not owned by alcohol and drugs anymore. I'm not owned and I have a new fellowship of friends and life's great. Life's great. Okay. Um, it's not always great, but I'm going to have a good day today because it's my choice. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. I fucking forgot to tell you in the beginning, like normal people do that make videos that are smart about it. Um, hopefully you made it this far. Probably didn't, but that's all right. Uh, I want to plug the impact foundation, la.org, the impact foundation, la.org started by an energizer bunny friend of mine named Vicky. She lost her son to an accidental fentanyl overdose. And she started the Impact Foundation for one thing, help people. Okay, so that's what the Impact Foundation does. Go on the website, impactfoundationla.org, check it out, and hit the donate button. See you guys next time.